Welcome back everyone. I got another video here for everybody to uh, take a look at. Uh, in this video we're going to work on some lettering spacing and I'm kind of excited about this because when I got the latest version of the Floriani software, the update anyway, they, um, they made a change to the lettering spacing that has bugged me from day one and um, it's much better if not perfect. So let me show you um, how this all works. Uh, we're going to do a um, couple names here to give you an idea um, what we're talking about. Um, and we're going to pretend we're doing some Christmas stocking. So we're going to um, type in a name here. We're going to do Tina. And um, I'm going to go ahead and pick um, about an inch and a quarter lettering and I'm going to do athletic script. So I'm going to apply that. Now as you can see, when this is what comes up by default. Um, the word Tina the letters are separated by a little bit of space here. In block, that would normally look fine. In script, um, I've seen people do that and I don't like it. Um, I generally make them connect like they would in regular script writing if we were writing it. So that's what, that's what we're talking about. Now, before the update, every time we would kern these letters and we would push them together, and I'll just do it quickly here, um, like this and we would make a change up here to any of the properties if we will go over here and say oh we wanted uh, a higher density when we did that it would lose our spacing and that was very frustrating as you can see that's fixed so I thought it was time to do a video and let you know how to do that um, what I consider correctly anyway so what we're going to do is go through these letters one by one and show you how I kern them manually first. I'll show you that first. And um, what we need to know is we need to know exactly what handles to use here. And we'll go over that first. And uh, to do that we're going to get our shape tool and we have to be in the lettering mode like that. You can see our handles. It's our shades of green and, and um, orange handles here. Not the solid black handles. That would be the one that allows us to adjust the overall size and rotate the text object where this one allows us to manipulate the individual letters. And what we need to remember here is to do our kerning we need to use this greenish gold um, diamond shape handle here and this allows us to kern and we want to use this one handle versus this handle the handles on the letters here which allow us to move the individual letter any way we want but the reason we don't want to use that one is because this kerning handle here doesn't allow us to go up and down only left and right and so the, it keeps our letters on a nice straight line the other thing it does is when we move this one you can see it it moves all the ones to the right of it at the same time so if we start left to right we can pull these letters to exactly where we want them and we don't have to go back and move each one individually and we can't accidentally move them up and down so anytime we're doing kerning like that we want to use those uh, diamond shaped handles that are right down the middle of our text so at least now we know what handle to use and how that works you can just grab each one and move it where you want now just overall that's what I like the name to look like it looks much better with these letters connected plus in this case with with the word Tina, we need to get that I underneath this T a little bit. It just looks really awkward if it was sticking out here like that. And so we just bring it back underneath here. And um, wherever you think is pleasing, that's that's what I like there. So that being the first name we're going to do and kind of showed us which handles to use. We're going to go ahead and change this. I'm putting in um, the word or the name Jennifer. We're not going to change the size and we're just going to apply that. Now what somebody might have already be thinking is well why do we have to move them individually when we could move them all at once and then there is a way to do that and I'll show you um, that that does work sometimes and I'll show you that it doesn't work other times. So again we're going to go back here get our selection there go back and get our click on our text as you can see we now have all our handles for our text um, changes there and we're going to go up here to spacing and um, obviously we need a negative spacing we're not going to add spacing and on athletic script I know I usually use about 10 percent so we're going to go ahead and put a negative 10 in there and click apply as you can see that pushed all our letters together 
and it did a pretty good job of it but if you especially at a larger size like this it's it's not necessarily uniform as you can see here on this uh, where the I meets up with the F that didn't push it together as far as I would want it to so that everything looked consistent now maybe you're not as picky as I am or maybe you're not thinking that at a big at a big size you have to be pickier so I'm gonna show you how I do it manually not that I say I would never use that in minus 10 percent because it does come in very handy but I'm gonna turn it off for right now just to let you know that I'm aware of that and how that does work we're gonna go back in and we're gonna do this one and we're gonna tell you a little bit about my method of doing it um, to make it look right so we're going to go back in here, get our select tool again, and we're going to start letter by letter. And again, I'm going to start from left and go right. So I'm going to move the E over a little bit. Um, wherever you want it next to the capital letter, I don't really have a general rule, whatever looks good there. But now when I come to connecting two lowercase letters, I do have a rule that I follow. And that is I'm going to bring that N over until the, the left line of that end that's coming down there on an angle meets up with this area of the E and I will zoom in a little closer so everybody can see that and we'll go back and grab that tool again and I'm gonna move that so when those two lines meet right here that's where I wanna stop and that actually means there's more overlap down here but then this this forms a really nice um, area right here where they overlap and so I'm going to use that rule whenever I can moving these letters so I'm going to sc scroll down here and I'll move that one over until those two intersect right there and then I'll come down here and do the same with the I and the N no problem there now if you remember when we did the 10 percent on the um, I and the J then the minus 10 percent these didn't connect and it probably has something to do with this J being much taller than the other letters so this one actually gets moved over but we use the same rule it still gets over there till these two connect right there at that point um, it just happened to be more than the minus 10 percent we had to move it over so that's why doing it manually works out better a lot of times now this one here we're going to use the same rule we're going to bring that over as soon as that line those lines meet even though these meet at completely different angles that will look good when it's sewn and the last one here is we're going to bring this R over I'm going to use the same rule when those when those two meet right at this point that's where I'm going to stop now as you can see because of the angles of these two letters meet that leaves a gap now if we were sewing this at a smaller size maybe we're putting the name on a shirt or something that was um, maybe six tenths of an inch tall that little gap probably wouldn't show and we probably wouldn't have to worry about it but since we're doing this at an inch and a quarter uh, that gaps actually going to be pretty noticeable so I'm going to fix that here in a minute but first I want to go before I fix that I wanted to show you kind of what this looks like now that we have everything what I call kerned together and all of our letters flow in with the exception of the E and the R there everything connects together real nice and that will give you a really nice look of looking embroidery right there so the next thing we want to do is fix this so we've got everything connected and you need to kind of remember anytime you're going into the lowercase r on athletic script and even on some of the other script fonts um, there are certain letters that don't connect good and that and the uh, lowercase r is one of them the problem really isn't in the e here it's just the way the r comes down so we're going to fix it so to do that we're going to come over to our sequence view and we're going to select that lettering and we're going to right click on it and we're going to come up here to break up text now what that does is it's no longer text it breaks us into individual elements that give us the same shape but since we have those elements we can now edit them as you can see here we've got a lot of columns or satins and runs here and that still forms our lettering so we're going to go hit the Z key here move, zoom in to right here where this E and R connect and we're going to fix that. First thing we're going to do is get our shape tool. And by looking at this, I'm going to fix the E rather than the R because I think this needs to swoop down here a little bit further and just change the angle that it meets in with the R. So we're not going to worry about the R, we're actually just going to change the E. So now that I got the shape tool, I'm going to click on the 
the area here which is actually the one just sat in here that makes up the E so what we need to do is we need to change the angle at which these come together so to edit the outline of this I need to right click on the word edit there on our menu come down here to outlines because I'm not going to edit I need to do the outline which is the shape first and I just want to get all those other angle lines and the exit and uh, entry points out of the way so now that I've got that I'll zoom back in here so everybody can see it I'm just gonna bring this line over here not gonna worry about anything other than just where it's gonna end which is right there and this one actually comes down just slightly and we're gonna end that one there zoom back out now and we just need to form this curve so it looks like it meets naturally it would be a little better and I'll go ahead and right click now and you can see that actually meets a little better but it's still not as good as I think we could make it so I'm gonna right click again edit outlines and this time I'm gonna bring this point down I'm gonna bring this point down which brings this curve out a little bit and what this will do is it changes the angle that we meet this E meets the R and then I will right click one more time and this time I'm going to do the entry and exit points and actually this exit point is fine it's at the very end um, I can see some extra stitches right here and we need to get rid of those if we want this to be absolutely perfect so I'm gonna right click here and as you can see it redrew that and this meets up at a much better angle than we had before the other way it kinda of looked um, awkward this time it just flows right into the letter now what we're seeing here is some extra stitches that's on top of the satin stitch we can probably find that real easy by clicking on them and coming over here and just actually just get those out of there we're just going to delete them right out of our sequence view and you can see we have an, a really nice smooth almost continuous look here it doesn't look like two letters are meeting it looks like it's a nice smooth um, junction there in fact nobody would be able to tell where one ends and the other meets which is exactly what we wanted to do in script lettering so that's how you can fix that and that may seem like a lot of work and I don't fix that all the time when we're doing lettering definitely the bigger it gets the more detail you want to look into to make your embroidery look nice and um, so that kind of shows you the the way I space out my script lettering uh, we could do another video here maybe on some block lettering but remember the script is the most important one so that one flows one letter flows into the other so hopefully uh, you got something out of that video and we'll be back with another video as soon as I come up with a new subject here